Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about the hardest part about programming that nobody talks about. So let's get into it. Well, there are a few things that we don't really like to, I mean everybody's experience is kind of different on this one, but I think that there is a few things that are truly common within programming and being a software developer that nobody actually talks about, like the dark side of things, the things that aren't so fun about being programmer, uh, being a programmer. I mean, most people will argue that it's a nice idea to make a fairly decent living, uh, to be able to build things and all of this good stuff and take part in conversations about technical stuff. I mean, that's kind of the fun part, right? But there's another side to this. I mean, everything has, uh, has downs, just as, you know, pros and cons, right? And I think that if we're going to focus on the one thing that nobody really talks about as a downside of programming, I will say that it is pressure. Pressure is probably the one, one of the few things that we don't really talk so much about when we talk about how it is to be a software developer. And you see, pressure, it's coming, uh, it comes very naturally to this field because you are working in an industry of professionals and an industry of experts. And whenever you work in an expert field, the perception is that you have a certain amount of skill, like you're really good at what you do. And I would say that it's almost a little bit worse for programmers than most other like expert fields because we have some, there is this weird type of competition type of thing going on a lot of the time. I mean, there are expert fields where, you know, just it's, as long as you pass the bar and you have your license or you have the degree or something like that, then you're kind of set. I mean, then for the most part, I mean, you don't really compete with other programmers about being clever, at least not on the internet, not what I, from what I could see. Maybe there are people who are doing this. Maybe there are doctors and architects out there who just compare penises and try, or whatever they have to one-up each other. I don't know. But in programming, there, this is for sure something that happens. And you see, this pressure, you may think as a junior that that pressure only is there when you start out. It might be, you might feel like a lot worse when you're a junior, but that pressure is actually fairly constant throughout your entire career. Because whenever you sit down, I mean, you always have this fear and it, it gets mitigated to a certain point. But whenever you start at a new company or you start working with team members and so forth, remember, you always have this sensation that whatever you produce, you need to be emotionally equipped and intellectually equ equipped to write a solution that is in line with how everybody perceives something to work. I mean, a fun thing that I've heard many times happen is that you have, it's, let's say the people who are interviewing for Google, you have senior developers who have been working in the industry for years who fail the coding test because, you know, although they can really write software, they can't uh, produce in the region, like in the area of what Google is testing for, like algorithmic thinking and so forth. Like, in other words, they fail at that specific aspect. And since that's the thing that the company is prioritizing, they get dismissed. The same thing is true, not just in the coding challenge, guys, it's true for going to a job. I mean, I remember at my first job, well, not necessarily my first job, but I've been in a situation, uh, the, this sort of situation quite a few times where I can produce the results and it doesn't really, like, even if I can, going to a certain company, you might have a manager or some person working there who judges you based on their own perception of what quality software is. And you always run that risk. If that person is an influential type of person, a manager type of thing, and they perceive, it doesn't matter if you're the best programmer in the world, if they perceive you as writing worse software or not being fast enough or things of this nature, or not writing good enough code, like the quality of the code is too bad, anything, like any of this perception, if that comes your way, you actually can get quite a lot of, uh, well, you can get problems from that. In so in an extreme case, you might actually get fired because you can't produce at a certain level. This is very common with juniors, for example, where they first start out and the company's perspective uh, perception is that they should be able to produce more than they actually can. And then they can't keep up and the stress just keeps on building because they feel this anxiety that, oh, I'm always, like, that's one of the most common ones that you feel slow all the time. It feels like you're taking too long on everything. And that is almost constant throughout the entire career. 
uh, throughout your entire career. Well, I won't say too much, but I mean, I've talked to people who are in the in, like in the retirement range of their career as programmers right now. And I mean, they don't really get stressed about a lot of stuff, but the pressure that they have is different because their pressure is not necessarily that they can produce fast enough. It's more about them taking on bigger and bigger responsibilities on behalf of the company. Just being a coder when you're like closing into your 50s, might it's actually a, it's a much trickier thing that you might, than you might expect because the industry's perception is that you should outgrow the role of a software developer, at least have some type of uh, a fairly high level of seniority. And it might be hard for you to find employment options at that age if you don't transcend this whole, like you just write code right. But that is, uh, that's probably going to be my answer. The most, in my world at least, the thing that nobody talks about is uh, that there is an enormous amount of pressure almost all the time. Every single day you sit down because let's remember you sit down and you solve problems that no well quote quote unquote nobody's ever solved before, and you do that on a daily basis. That is pretty much your job to figure out bugs, to figure out how to work within a bad code base, to come to a code uh, to a section of the code and realize that shit, you can't really do whatever you want because somebody else has already written certain stuff in a certain way. So now you have to find a workaround. And of course, disappointing people where you have to explain, like you have planned something and then you're going to need more time to feel emotionally equipped to just let people down because usually the way it goes is that you are ambitious and really high energy in the beginning of a planning uh, of planning. And then reality hits you and delays kind of introduce, it gets introduced and all that good stuff. And then you have to disappoint people usually and scope uh, decreased to the point where you don't really feel like you're producing quality at all. And these things are, they're always there every single day. And then of course you have deadlines and all this obvious stuff, but that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So what I want you to take away from this is that the, one, the thing that, I, that is bad about being a programmer that nobody talks about is that you will face a fairly high amount of stress. Not the, as much as like a really stressed out project manager or project lead or something like that, but you're going to always, always, they, it's very rare that you can just sit and relax. If it's not that you're too slow or you feel that you're not producing fast enough, it's somebody else who thinks that you're not producing fast enough or you are in some fashion being judged by other coders in code reviews, like your code isn't good enough or things. like there's always something and you need to be a fairly emotion, an emotionally stable type of person in order to deal with that in an adult fashion. Because usually the people who don't deal with this in an adult fashion are the people who quit. They just quit and stop being software developers or they turn into gigantic douchebags whenever they when they get to a certain level of seniority and treat other people like shit uh, to emotionally deal with the stress that they feel themselves have a great day